Project 3.1.2, Program and Control EEPROM. The second stage of the chump build incorporates code onto the board using the AT28C16 parallel EEPROMs. It's also built off the program counter outputs from the previous stage of this project. A shorter summary video for this project is linked in the description below. This is the diagram of the 16K 2K by 8 parallel EEPROM. As you can see, it has 11 address pins and 8 I.O. pins. In simple terms, the address pins are used as inputs and the I.O. pins are used as outputs. The address pins, A0 to A3, are wired to the 4-bit program counter outputs, and the I.O. pins are wired into LEDs, or 7-segment displays, to display their programmed outputs. The remaining address pins, A4 to A10, can either be grounded or they can be set up for paging to access different programs stored onto the device. Programming, or burning the EEPROM, is a little bit complicated. It requires the EEPROM device to be detached from the actual project in the burning process. This is the EEPROM burner. For reference, this is the circuit diagram it's based on. The sequence for writing starts with the write enable pin, or slash WE, being set high so that it doesn't accidentally write anything while the address and I.O. pins are being defined. Slash OE should also be set high so that each I.O. pin can receive an input rather than blocking the current with a high output. Then, a signal needs to be defined on each address pin and each I.O. pin to define an address and the corresponding output on the I.O. pins. With that set, the write enable can now be toggled low and then high within the span of 500 microseconds. This will secure the address to the corresponding output on the EEPROM device. Chump has two different EEPROMs serving different tasks. The program ROM outputs a constant and the opcode. The constant goes to the rest of the program and the opcode goes to the control ROM, which uses that code to send signals to every other device, telling them whether or not to activate or what functions to use. This stage, however, does not have the program and control ROM wired as they should be for the final chump. Instead, they are separated and outputting different codes onto the LEDs and 7-segment displays. What you see here are the various binary and hex-written codes that are used on these EEPROMs. They range from 7-segment display translations, primarily written in hex, to actual codes such as Feinberg's example code and the final chump code written in binary, and the control code for these projects, also written in binary. Each of these codes are assigned their own page, which is a sequence of address bits beyond A4 that stay constant throughout the running of the program. For this project, these are the codes in the associated pages for these EEPROMs. Start at the top instruction of the chump code from the previous project. So it should be add two or hex two two. It's showing that right now, so that's good. The next instruction is store to M, so it should be six seven. Yep, oh, it skipped there. Uh, but that is also the third instruction, load 505. Five. The next instruction should be store to X or store to 3, so 63. Yep. The next instruction should be if 0, 14, so EE. E. Yep. Uh, the next instruction should be read Y or read 2, so 82. Yep. The next instruction should be load it, so 10. Yep. Uh, the next instruction should be uh, read 7 or read M, 8, 7. Yeah. Uh, the next instruction should be add it, so 3, 0. The next instruction will be store to Y or store to 2, 6, 2. There we go. Uh, the next one is read X or 8, 3, read 3. The next instruction is load it, so 1, 0. Yep. Uh, the next instruction is subtract one, so four one. Yeah. Uh, the next instruction is go to three, so it should appear as uh, C three, I think. Yeah. And the next instruction store to Y, so six two. There we go. And the last instruction is load one, so it should be zero one. There we go. To access a different page on the EEPROMs, all I would have to do are change the orientation of these three wires, uh, not the leftmost one on this, 
uh, but these three wires and I would just change whether they were uh, connected to uh, power or ground and then they would access a different page. I would do the same for this EEPROM with these three wires, again not the leftmost one. Uh, so just give me a second while I do that and I will unplug the power. So now I have different codes running on these EEPROMs. And neither of these codes are seven segment display translations, so ignore what you see on the seven segment display. It's not going to make any sense. What matters here instead is the outputs on these bar graphs and these LEDs here. Um, those outputs are demo are presenting a code sequence. Uh, for the left one, I have set it to page. F um, I set it to page four, so it's outputting the control codes. And on the right one, I have set it to the chunk code byte outputs. This is actually a great example because uh, the chunk code on the right side is going to be on my program EEPROM and the control code on the left side is going to be on my control EEPROM. So what I can do is I can reset this to instruction zero and run through the process with the binary forms. So once these uh, program counter LEDs here reach all zeros, that is instruction zero. So we're already familiar with the chunk code, so I'm not going to run through that. It's just going to display over here. Instead, it's going to be displayed in binary form rather than hex form on the uh, seven segment displays. Uh, what we're going to focus on here instead is the control code. So you'll see on this chunk block diagram that there are a number of C flags for different components. These are highlighted in red, and then there's the control ROM, which is highlighted in blue. Again, each EEPROM only has eight outputs, but it looks like there's only five uh, C flags that need to be tagged. The only problem is the ALU actually has six C flags, it's only marked as one. So that gives us 10 C flags that we need to reach, but only eight outputs to do it with. So we need to find alternatives for some of those C flags. This table shows us which C flags can be substituted for alternative sources. So there are C flags leading into the multiplexer and the program counter NAND gate, and those can be taken as substitutes straight from the opcode. So the select uh, multiplexer C flag can come straight from opcode 4, and opcode 7 and 6 if you combine them with AND logic, uh, we'll make the PCC flag. And the reason these work is because the C flag for the PC only needs to be high when the PC needs to be reset, and that's only for the go to and if zero instruction. And the multiplexer only needs to be high if it's using a memory location, so it only needs to be high for every other instruction. And since opcode 4 alternates every other instruction, it's the perfect suit. The remaining bits, highlighted in blue, are connected to the I.O. pins of the control output. So now, if we look at the uh, control EEPROM output on this bar graph, we should be able to see it match up with the instructions uh, for their associated row according to the output on these program counters, which represent the opcode. So uh, let's just click through it a couple times. It's currently on instruction zero, so it should be load 1010 1001. That's right. The next instruction will be the exact same. So, yep. The second instruction is add, so 0010 uh, is on the program counter, and then 1001 0101. That's right. Next instruction is going to be exactly the same. Uh, the next instruction is subtract. So uh, 0110, 0001, that is correct. Next instruction is going to be the ex exact same. Uh, store 2 is the next one. So 1111, 1000. Yep. Uh, this is read. So 1111, 1011. That's correct. Uh, the next one is uh, AND, which is a custom instruction according to the ALU capabilities. So it should be 1011-1001. Yep. Um, the next one is uh, GO TO. So it should be 1100-1011. Yep. Uh, the last instruction is IF ZERO. So 0000 
1011. Yep, and that confirms that the control code is operating correctly. Thanks for listening.